Um, and let's see, what else am I forgetting? Um, we are limited to an hour, and that's kind of a hard stop. Um, and so I'm just going to turn this over to Jennifer, and she's going to get into um, her presentation. Jennifer, you want to take it away? Excellent, Michael. Thank you. And just a reminder to all, I'm actually going to stay off of video. If you guys want to be on video, you can, but uh, we're sticking with a slide orientation or oriented presentation today. Please mute uh, your phones since I will be the only one talking unless Michael or Sue or Robin decide to uh, clarify anything I might have to say. Uh, and Michael, since this is mandatory, did you want at least one representative from every vendor to chat, put in the, the chat message that they are here representing? That's right. Their potential um, I knew I was forgetting something. Thanks. Yep. Um, so, uh, so we can keep attendance um, and um you know keep record of who is who is here if you could please just send me your contact information via chat i'd greatly appreciate that excellent so i will ignore all those chats as they come in my name is jennifer and i'm excited to talk to all of you today and i just want to start with a thank you really appreciate all of you making time uh to listen in today we are here to talk about the IT professional services um, that is designed to assist with establishing the Enterprise Cloud Computing Program. This is a program underneath OCIO, the Office of the Chief Information Officer, which is a division of WATEC, also known as the Centralized Technology Services Organization for the state of Washington. Uh, so I'll use those terms. OCIO is a part of WATEC. WATEC is also known as CTS. Uh, they go together. Um, but we're excited that you are here and interested in a new program within the OCIO called the Enterprise Cloud Computing Program. Uh, we're looking for professional services supports. That term is fairly generic. So my goal today is to amplify and highlight for you some things that are within the Enterprise Cloud Computing Program for which we are looking for support. I'm gonna do really three things today. The uh, give you a, an overview of the cloud strategy all in for the state of Washington, the uh, and then specifically the enterprise cloud computing program that will be the workhorse behind executing that strategy. We're going to talk and emphasize uh, elements of the RFP. It really isn't a whole lot new today. If you've read, studied, and soaked in the RFP, you shouldn't be surprised by anything I have to tell you. Um, but I, we did feel like it was worthwhile to actually have a live conversation and give it the opportunity to actually highlight and verbally affirm some of the elements of the RFP. So I should say this like 10 times. I will endeavor to say it only two or three, but please read the RFP. Um, it's, it, we realize it's, it's, it's meaty, I guess, uh, weighty. It's heavy. Um, I hope that you recognize that in the context of doing cloud for the state of Washington at the enterprise level, it warrants some weight and some, and some meat to it. So we recognize that. Again, I'll try to highlight some critical elements for you and point you to sections of the RFP and give some context for it. Again, nothing particularly new today, uh, just an emphasis and a, and a highlight. And then we'll end with the RFP schedule and just make sure that you see the critical bits. Jumping in to the cloud strategy, uh, I smile because cloud is not new, right? This is not something new and different. Uh, this is just something that the state of Washington needs to spend some additional time being diligent about, being intentional about. And if you think over the last couple of years, there, there've been a lot of conversations about cloud, whether it be the legislature or IT leadership um, from WATEC and, and elements of, the, of other state agencies across the state, cloud is a, is a popular topic. There are SaaS implementations at various agencies. There's infrastructure deployments. Um, across various agencies. However, I, I think we can look somewhat critically and analytically over the last few years and acknowledge that there's more work to be done. There's more potential that we could capture in terms of um, cloud adoption for the state and taking advantage of cloud technologies, using the term very generically intentionally here, uh, but take advantage of cloud to improve a variety of things and deliver value for the state of Washington. So in that context, the legislature's had some and I hear a little bit of typing in the background if everybody can mute, I'd appreciate it. Uh, 
the in that context, the legislature has explored a couple of different cloud activities and cloud mandates and cloud bills over the last few years. The first that really came into play was funding the cloud readiness report. So through 2020, There's someone who is typing. Please stop. Mute yourself. Jennifer, are you there? Jennifer, are you muted? I did not mute me. <laughs> and no, I was not the one typing. Uh, so, um, so the cloud readiness report is an important context here. It encourages and advises the creation of the centralized organization that is now known as the Enterprise Cloud Computing Program. So we have a name for it now. It also defines a couple of programs, so project level work streams within that centralized organization and adjacent work streams. So it's an important contextual element that was completed uh, in December and January of this year. In parallel to that, in this last legislative cycle, there was uh, 1274, which established the need for a cloud task force to further assess the impact on the uh, workforce. Sorry, I got distracted with that being muted. Um, that the need to and the benefits really to establish and evaluate the impacts on the state workforce, the state IT workforce on cloud. So that is a parallel activity that isn't really germane or critical path right now to the enterprise cloud computing program, but it definitely is in the context of the cloud strategy. The third column here is really where we find ourselves kicking off this centralized organization, establishing the enterprise cloud computing program using some internal fronts from Watech to start now. Um, so hence we have this RFP that we're here to talk about today and are doing some work uh, regarding establishing some initial strategies and guiding principles, uh, some scope that is addressed in, at least as is relevant within the RFP. So excited about the work that's happening now and the work to have, the potential to have a partner to come and accelerate ad fuel expertise and capacity uh, to that work. So as we look forward to the remaining uh, months in the fiscal year, getting to June of 2022, establishing the centralized, centralized organization, being prepared to accelerate migrations um, into cloud and cloud services and solutions for the state, getting some support, again, both expertise and capacity from you, the vendor community, to help the state of Washington as an enterprise get to cloud destinations. We know we need help. That's why we're here. Um, so drilling down one level, that's kind of the, the, the larger term scope and context of all of the other sort of parallel activities associated with cloud and cloud strategies for the state. You're up and down a level in terms of the enterprise cloud computing program four critical work streams that are described within the RFP and are absolutely relevant in terms of uh, the, the Enterprise Cloud Computing Program's focus and work activities over the coming years. The first one is establishing cloud solutions expertise and leadership. This is really about uh, the integration functions on a cloud service brokerage. So if you're familiar with the cloud service brokerage term in the industry, from a state of Washington and enterprise point of view, we're really focusing on the ECC providing that integration layer, that integration set of functions in terms of the brokerage capability that includes defining of interfaces and setting of standards and addressing the foundational functional capabilities that are required to execute well in cloud across the entire enterprise. Also with this, program level establishment, the Enterprise Cloud Computing Program will facilitate a community of practice within the state. One of the things that we learned in the cloud readiness survey and that we can observe day to day within the state is there's a lot of pockets of cloud, but we don't necessarily learn from those pockets effectively. One agency might be in the lead with respect to deploying a new solution. 
there is an opportunity to improve the cloud, the, a community of practice where we learn from each other and leverage each other's uh, strengths and knowledge and experiences. Um, so that's really this foundational program level setting and establishing of, uh, of the cloud services foundation. The second element there is an architectural team that thinks about standards and support uh, for those standards, leadership and ideology as to where we should be headed, roadmap authoring and designing best practices. This role will also in part facilitate governance in terms of decision making and affirmation of standards and policies and practices for cloud-based technologies for the state assets. The third element is really a more of an operations team. I think about them really as, uh, as the engineers and those who actually build uh, the templates, the standards, the guardrails, the easy button, if you will. How do we equip and enable as the enterprise cloud computing program, state agencies to have an easy button to press to say, hey, I'm, I'm willing and ready to go to cloud. How can you help me? Or I've got some obstacles that I need some help addressing. Maybe I've got uh, a skill set gap or I've never done this before and I need some certifications. How can you show me that you've been there before, been a few steps down the road already and lend a hand and maybe help me uh, as an agency, pull me up a ladder, a, a rung or two. So this is really the cloud ready operations elements. Again, foundational for the enterprise wide, a, an ability to look enterprise wide and observe and report and provide support to agencies to equip them to help them choose cloud solutions well, to be the easy button um, and to accelerate through that easy button set of solution sets, uh, capabilities and functionality, cloud adoption within ind individual agencies. The fourth critical element in terms of the enterprise cloud computing program is the tools. So we think about the processes, which I've, I've talked about. Uh, this is really the tools elements. There's people in this as well. So addressing all people, processes and tools looking for an enterprise wide set of tools. So uh, the, the RFP document talks about the need to be effectively multi-tenant uh, so that agencies can have their own view and the enterprise cloud com computing program can have a statewide view. These tools can come in financial factors that can come in cloud environment management and, uh, and configuration and procurement kind of tools that can come in um, planning and inventory management tools. So all of those are defined within the procurements, but clearly equipping and enabling an enterprise wide tool set so that agencies have what they need to do cloud well and the enterprise cloud computing program can provide support and assistance to agencies and enterprise level uh, use and reporting. Those are the four critical work streams uh, that we have articulated. Again, they're built on the context and the background that we've had over the last year and a half. Um, now those are the four critical work streams that are owned by and um, will be driven by the Enterprise Cloud Computing Program. The ECC is really looking to define the paths to the cloud, to lay the solid foundations to aid agencies in achieving improved performance, agility, and fiscal efficiency for their cloud applications. All of that, again, is in the RFP, so would strongly encourage you to sort of uh, soak in that. Um, we intended to keep it brief, but it, that makes it, it, uh, it meaty. In addition to those four work streams, there are some things that we'll call adjacent activities. They're critical path, they're important enablers, they're critical foundations. They are adjacent in that the first three are led by other elements of WATEC. Uh, so again, uh, the Enterprise Cloud Computing Program is a part of the OCIO uh, within the WATEC entity. There are other aspects of, of that centralized technology services organization within the state of Washington that are relevant here. Identity management is also owned by and will be driven by an OCIO elements, uh, the Enterprise Architecture Team. Cybersecurity is owned by the OCS and, uh, and that team and network assessments will be a part of operations uh, and technology, the, the network team within WATEC. So uh, we acknowledge the, these are adjacent work streams. They will be led by other elements of WATEC. The role of the ECC will be integral in supporting these efforts to ensure that these critical enabler, enablers for cloud adoption are accomplished on behalf of the enterprise. Um, so they are referenced within the RFP. They are absolutely adjacent and critical path work streams. Uh, we would imagine that the expertise and uh, capacity of the vendors could in fact be used to accomplish these work streams. There will be this partnership between the ECC and these work streams. 
we haven't defined an initial scope of work at this point for any of, any of these work streams within the RFP, but we acknowledge that they are adjacent and relevant to accomplishing cloud and therefore include, included by adjacency, if you will, um, in terms of this procurement. The bottom section also identifies initiatives that, again, were originally defined in the cloud readiness assessments. Um, and at this point, we're unsure of the scope from an enterprise cloud computing program point of view. Our initial response is to anticipate that they will predominantly be led by the agencies themselves. If you think about organizational change management for an application deployment, it's predominantly an agency role within the state of Washington. Uh, similarly, workforce enablement and development and training and certifications and um, is a is a state state agency primary role. So you'll see that in the roles and the responsibilities matrix within uh, the RFP. We just also acknowledge that this is a critical path, right? It, it will be very difficult. These are critical obstacles that agencies have already lifted up to say, hey, I'm struggling with OCM capacity or with uh, workforce readiness relative to my ability to adopt and accelerate and get into cloud solutions. So uh, the enterprise cloud computing program is looking to support, assist, enable, equip. Um, the full scope of the role here from an OCM and, and workforce development is to be informed by the currently in process task force that reports due in November. Um, so we just find ourselves kind of in a parallel path right now with, with multiple activities. But again, these are the adjacent work streams. Uh, they are described in the RFP or at least referenced in the RFP. I wanted to provide to that point this picture. So we're going to drop down a level. That's the the grander scheme, if you will, the larger strategy and storyline. The uh, This is really the critical slide that highlights what we did differently in this 22-RFP-003 procurement. Um, let me also make a note that last Friday, uh, we realized that in the initial release of this current 003 procurement, uh, we had a numbering issue in terms of the sections within the RFP. So Michael released an amendment that corrected that numbering. That amendment only corrects the numbering. There's no content change, nothing else shifted. Um, but it's important for your team's ability to consume and reference back to se sections of the RFP that you have the correct number. So make sure you've pulled that amended version of 003. This slide talks about the original procurement back in July. I realize and really appreciate all of your effort um, to read and consume that RFP. And I wanted to just affirm, not the purpose, the intent, the scope hasn't changed. What we've done in 003 is refine it in an intent to um, improve your ability to consume what it is that we're looking to do, provide some clarity and uh, some better, uh, more clearly defined boundaries to help you understand what we're trying to accomplish. Uh, so in that context, I wanted to provide this picture for you, that cloud readiness report that's described in section 1.2 and the rest of the content within section 1.2 of the 003 RFP is the background. We've refined that background and added additional context um, to make sure that you can understand this is a procurement to engage professional services, to provide leadership, expertise, guidance, coaching, somebody who's gone before us in terms of building a enterprise cloud computing program for an entity like the state of Washington, a centralized entity with um, the relationships that WATEC has with agencies across the state, this facilitator role, this ability to coach, guide, and um, support agencies as they take on cloud adoption. Uh, all of that really is in the context now of the background section of 1.2 and references the cloud readiness report. From that background section, then we, we elevated and refined and made more comprehensive the description of the enterprise cloud computing program. So we've pulled in and refined and articulated the descriptions of those four work streams that I talked about earlier, the ability to have uh, uh, the program itself, to have cloud ready operations, to have the tools that are necessary, to have the architectural leadership and guidance for the state as a whole. So those are now described within the RFP, really for the intended full scope of the program. So as we imagined that uh, th those descriptions, we were looking forward four, five, maybe six years in terms of the state's evolution toward cloud. Um, that is the scope of the RFP and the scope of the program that we're looking for support for. So again, here that it is a engagement to provide architectural supports, best practices, uh, 
guardrails, standards, policies, guidance, navigation of a cloud adoption journey, and it's not a cloud services provider procurement. So um, the exact scoping and scaling of a particular cloud workload isn't what we're looking to do right now. What we're looking to do is add capacity and expertise and leverage the vendor community to do this well, to execute a path forward to design first and then execute a path forward in terms of cloud adoption for the state of Washington. So that's what's uh, introduced in, in section 1.3. Section 1.4 actually defines those work streams in more detail. Uh, so 1.3 kind of sets the context, establishes the objectives of the program in whole. Uh, 1.4 defines those work streams and establishes them as the core focus of the Enterprise Cloud Computing Program, as well as introduces these adjacent work streams that I've already talked to in terms of identity security, network, workforce planning, and OCM. Final thing I wanted to highlight here in terms of this funnel. So as you, as you read and digest the RFP, think about the Cloud Readiness Report providing sort of this umbrella background. 1.4. Three, uh, establishing the Enterprise Cloud Computing Program. 1.4, refining and describing the work streams that are a part of that program in whole. And then 1.5 is the initial statement of work. Uh, we know what we know at this point, which is a fairly definitive path forward through June of 2022. Uh, that work activity will inform the next four years. So we bid off what we could. We described what we knew. And we're asking you to respond to that with some specificity in terms of pricing. We realize there are a lot of unknowns for years two, three, and four. So hence, we're asking for, for pricing and we'll evaluate based on pricing for this initial statement of work. What I also wanted to emphasize in this context is that initial statement of work is refined in this 003 um, document, partly because of the delay in the release timeframe, but also just to provide some clarity. Uh, we did a couple of things. The first was application inventory has now been deferred out of the initial statement of work. We realized it's a critical work stream to be successful with cloud adoption as an enterprise, understanding what applications are where and where their timing is to move um, is a critical part of what we're trying to accomplish here. The inventory tool itself, the and, and however you want to label that, um, we have pushed out of the initial statement of work. The second thing that we did to manage the schedule and the amount of work that now will start early November and end by June was push out the execution of a pilot or pilot projects to demonstrate the capabilities of the Enterprise Cloud Computing Program and to come along a, alongside agencies who could be early adopters as a part of the program. Uh, so we're asking for the planning, identification and planning of those initial pilots, but recognizing that completing the pilot by June 30th is, is unrealistic at this point. So. Um, we made those adjustments. You'll see that, and hopefully there will be clarity for you in terms of this initial statement of work, how it fits into the larger set of project work streams, which is really the core of the Enterprise Cloud Computing Program in whole. Made a few other tweaks to address uh, some questions in terms of formatting the pricing table and otherwise that hopefully should streamline your ability to respond. The Enterprise Cloud Computing Program objectives that are listed here are in the RFP. This is actually a direct list from the RFP. I could honestly talk about these for hours. Uh, I'm super passionate about the ability to leverage the value of cloud to change the way the state operates and uh, interfaces with constituents, with uh, residents and businesses within the state of Washington, uh, but also even change the way that IT organizations execute um, programs and roadmaps and operate and, and manage applications. I'm not going to talk for hours today. I hope actually that all of you uh, could actually talk for hours today about the benefits of cloud. I really just wanted to emphasize that we're thinking about this. Uh, we're articulating and ideating on what success would look like for the enterprise cloud computing program, what the objectives should be in the near term and over the long term. We see everything from financial benefits, both in terms of capital savings and expense optimization. You'll note that those are actually distinct um, for a lot of actually really intentional reasons. Enhancing security is a critical component. Modernization, which for me really leads to the ability to be more responsive, more adaptive, more scalable, um, more iterative in our application deployment as a state um, and mobily enable uh, the business the, the state does with, again, its constituents. And then the workforce piece, it's at the bottom, but that's because it's at the foundation. The ability to equip and enable uh, 
the state workforce to manage and, and execute a roadmap in the future state. So um, I'm going to resist all temptations to talk about that any further because uh, I'm super excited about it. But I just want you to know that we're thinking about it and being intentional about it. And you're looking for a partner who can come alongside us uh, as we execute on those on that potential. This slide is also a direct lift from the RFP. I'm hopefully I've already talked about it to your satisfaction. So you'll see uh, we're in right now this blue phase. We're working on the preparations. We're ideating and, and articulating guiding principles and program scope and executing an RFP uh, to get some support and some help. Uh, as we shift here into the initiating the launching of the program, again, the four work streams, establishing of the program, whether you call it a cloud center of excellence or a cloud brokerage or establishing a community of practice, it has a lot of different labels, but um, establishing the program and its scope and roles and success criteria uh, is a, a critical work stream. Defining the tools, establishing and managing the tools to operate a cloud environment effectively for the enterprise, and then other operational activities in terms of uh, a migration roadmap, feature functionality, what should come first, what does good look like and cloud ready look like now, what are the initial guardrails? How do I set up the easy button? Um, all of those, again, uh, described already today. You see that the migration projects are conceived of. We know that that's a needed work activity. We just don't know a whole lot yet about what that looks like. So I'm using the standard terms of early adopters, early majority, late majority, and, and the finish to imagine that there's a life cycle of cloud adoption for the state of Washington. It could come in a few different shapes. Um, and again, we've pushed the execution of the pilot out of the green here, which represents the initial statement of work uh, within the RFP, but anticipates that the execution of that pilot would be in a subsequent SOW and inclusive of this procurement. The adjacent work streams that I've already talked about are also listed here. So again, this is a pictorial of everything I've already talked to and hope, hopefully provide some clarity as to how the things fit together. Um, and where the sequencing and parallel work might come. I wanted to bring in the statement of work deliverables. This is a direct copy from the RFP, uh, as you would expect in section 1.5.1. You are asked to actually provide specific approaches and um, cost outs, what it will take to accomplish these uh, deliverables as described. Um, again, there's a little bit of a refinement from what you would have seen from us in July, um, but now very consistent with the program work streams that I have described and are described here. So, um, I wanted to take a moment just to reaffirm the scope of the procurements to address some questions you might have as you think about enterprise cloud computing for the state of Washington and the enterprise as a whole. Really three things I wanted to focus on for you today. The scope of this procurement is not a cloud services procurement. The RFP is designed to acquire professional services to aid in the designing, architecting, roadmap creation, and scope definition around the enterprise cloud computing program. We're looking for architecture, architecture, and best practices from an engineering point of view for the state of Washington. We do anticipate that there will be building of templates and guardrails in a variety of cloud environments. We're looking for some expertise from people that have done that before. Um, we are not really trying to size, scale, or define specific workload migrations at this time. Um, most of that work will be likely led by the agencies themselves with support from the Enterprise Cloud Computing Program. We're not looking to build a centralized procurement um, for, or, or it, I, I call it sort of a middleware layer for all cloud aggregation for the state of Washington. Uh, that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to provide support, tools, facilitation, expertise, bed pra best practices, and guardrails to equip, enable, and accelerate cloud adoption within the state to come alongside and support agencies if they need some particular expertise or capacity to support a migration work effort, that's what we're here to accomplish and, and, and do. Second major question is about tools themselves. Again, this has largely been pulled out of the initial statement of work, uh, so the criticality of the question should be reduced. But uh, as a, an assumptive rule as defined within the RFP, uh, 
you can assume in terms of your approach that there isn't uh, a need to do extensive integration for existing cloud management or inventory management tool sets. Agencies do have some, there isn't anything centrally deployed at this point. Uh, the requirements for those centralized tools are clearly a deliverable in the initial statement of work. It's one of the things we know we need to get our arms around. So what does an inventory management tool look like? What benefits does it bring? And what would we, what does good look like for the state of Washington? Similarly, from a finance point of view, similarly from a, a, a deployment and um, management of, of cloud workloads point of view. Finally, on scope, we did integrate the program work streams definition. They are now integrated into the RFP. We've reduced the dependency on any external references that might have created some confusion. I've talked about the second row quite a bit. The initial statement of work establishes what is known today and anticipated between now and June 30th for the initial statement of work. This is a multi-year contract, and we're looking for a partner to come alongside and support the execution of the full program and therefore would anticipate additional statements of work to take on the rest of the work that is articulated and described within the RFP. We will be using the initial statement of work to evaluate particularly the pricing components. We needed something, we needed a bound definition um, to, uh, to evaluate price. Um, so hence we're using the price on the initial SOW um, to evaluate price and um, contribute to the overall evaluation of, of the vendors. And just again, affirming application migrations are not in the initial SOW uh, and the eventual scope of work is barely conceived of at this point in terms of the level of effort that will be accomplished by agencies versus the level of effort that will be um, leveraged within the enterprise cloud computing program. That is to be determined over time, but application migrations are not in the initial SOW. Again, just really want to encourage you to read the RFP and understand its scope and what in the context of the state of Washington we're looking to do. The final elements, just wanted to give you a, a point of context. The Enterprise Cloud Computing Program will be led by a manager and initially staffed with two additional team members. That's a total of three. Uh, you should imagine that that's why we're here. Actually, that's why we're here asking for your help. Uh, we know we need more, dramatically more capacity than that to accomplish the mission, the vision, the objectives, and the potential of the Enterprise Cloud Computing Program. Um, so wanted to give you that as a foundation. I'm gonna finish with this. This is the RFP schedule. It is actually a direct copy of the RFP itself. Uh, so we are here uh, today in the pre-proposal conference. Final questions are due on August 17th at noon. I believe that is next Tuesday. At noon, uh, please submit your questions. And again, we would appreciate it if you would make sure those you've read the RFP <laughs> um, when submitting your questions, but look forward to providing any further clarity or uh, answer any questions that are germane to helping you respond effectively to the, the procurement. We will spend some time refining our answers uh, and get them to you no later than August 26th. If valuable, we will make this determination. So this is optional, a post question and answer conference. If we feel like it would be valuable to have a, another one of these where we can verbally tell you what we put in writing, um, we will do that on August 27th. Uh, just pay attention to those dates. We'll issue an amendment if that conference is deemed to be uh, needed and valuable. Uh, we will publish that um, shortly after or around the 26th. Uh, the sponsors are... Yes, Michael. Um, if I may, I'm sorry to interrupt. This just seems like a good point uh, rather than wait to the end to stress something. Um, as you're looking at this schedule where we have the submission of the Q&A and the responses due at noon on those particular days, and that means noon. So um, in my experience, I don't mean to sound uh, condescending, but um, I know what it's like to be a high school teacher now because um, I get everyone waits to the last minute and I've received some responses over the years at 12.01 and I have to disqualify them. So it is, uh, we have a very black and white process and 12 noon means 12 noon. So please don't wait to the last minute. That's all I got to say. 
Okay. Sorry, sorry for the okay. interruption, Jennifer. Go ahead. No worries. All good. And it is defined in the RP. It isn't on this little snip, but it is defined Correct. in Pacific time. Okay. So 12 noon Pacific time. Don't miss that deadline. Uh, and deadlines actually questions due on August 17th uh, at noon. And then proposals, full responses due according to the, uh, as described in the RP, uh, 12 noon. Okay. Uh, we do anticipate it's it's optional, but we would anticipate that there will be an interview process uh, for this procurements. It's one of those that uh, sort of hearing some verbal processing is valuable to understand a vendor's experience and their approach. So uh, would anticipate that again. It's optional. We'll see uh, what the written responses look like and whether or not there's a clear um, a clear and. Uh, all right, and then again, for the assumptive purposes of planning and scoping and scheduling the work, we are anticipating a contract availability date of November 15th. That is, this one says end, which is super profound. So uh, again, thank you for your time today. I appreciate you making yourself uh, available and uh, listening in today. Please read the um, If I may just kind of wrap up here. <clears throat> Are you, is this a good time, Jennifer? You, it is, I'm done. Yeah. Okay, um, <clears throat> so again, if uh, you didn't already, please send me your contact info in the chat. So I have that, I'm gonna match that up. Um, sure. And as this is a mandatory pre-response conference, uh, I'll need that to ensure that um, you attended. So if I don't have that, I won't know. Um, uh, in case uh, you didn't hear it already, it bears repeating. Please read the RFP. Read to the dark corners of, of the document. Everything is in there that you need to know. Um, that's not to say you shouldn't, you know, you can't submit questions, um, but all the instructions to respond are in there. Um, you know, we kind of took the questions we got last time and refined a bunch of things to make it clear to address things and kind of, um, you know, re answer some questions. Uh, but, um, please read, read the document. So I've got some questions already that show, you know, they, who, the people that asked them haven't read the document. So I, I can't stress that enough. Um, and uh, again, you know, the deadlines are firm. Um, <clears throat> other than that, um, I, I can't think of anything else um, other than the next step is the Q&A. Uh, so Jennifer, if you think of any parting, parting thoughts. I'm good. Thank you very much for your time. Appreciate uh, your your willingness to be available for us. We look forward to any questions for clarification or refinements of the procurement to date and uh, eventually for your partnership and engagement. So thanks. And lastly, again, uh, this recording and the slide presentation will be posted on our website and also posted through webs. And with that, um, I think that's all I have to say. So to reiterate what Jennifer said, thanks for attending. And um, I think that's that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.